So some Christians believe that uh, you have to supplant or replace uh, the Lord God in the scriptures as uh, and put instead of Lord Jehovah or Yahweh, uh, depending on different groups have different emphasis. So, so I have someone here who was a, a, a Jehovah's Witness elder. Uh, his name is Antoine uh, Warren. So I'll just hand it over to you, Antoine. And if you could just introduce your t a brief introduction and you know your background and what your knowledge about this subject. Okay. Sure. Well. Of course, I was born and raised in the uh, in the organization as a witness, uh, my, myself and my wife. And uh, we left about, it's probably been about a year and a half now. It was in the latter part of 2015. And you know, uh, you know, I was uh, all in, uh, you know, I, I was a, I was a, one of those type of witnesses who they say you you progress, you know, you become an elder, you pioneer, you do all these things, uh, you know, giving talks, things of that nature. But it was it was the study of the scriptures, uh, apart from the literature, that kind of opened my eyes a bit to, uh, you know, various truths. And uh, when that started to happen, you know, things kind of took off. And so one of the first things that I started to to see and the understanding, uh, you know, understand as I, you know, started to research, you know, as a witness, you know, just to give a little background of, of the witness mind, you know, the name Jehovah was such a, you know, a pivotal name that this is something, you know, the witnesses held on to dearly. You can meet, you know, in our ministry, when we went out in, in the field ministry, you can meet a person who professes to be a, a Christian and has a, you know, we would admit they have a good, solid understanding of scripture. But the question next, in the back of our mind, we're waiting to get out is, what well, do you know God's name? Do you know his name? You know, that, that, that was our, you know, stepping stone. Okay, you have this knowledge of the scriptures, but do you know his name? And we're waiting to use Psalm 83, 18 about the name of Jehovah. Uh, you know, he's, he's the... Okay, okay, I thought I got it. No, I'm yeah. just bringing it up here for people. 83? 18. 18? Yeah, it's a little feedback there. Wow. It's the echo. echo. Okay. All right. All right. Well, there's 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 little little bit, bit. Bit. I just talked talk a little bit. But yeah, yeah. of course, the New World Translation, and there's a few other translations that, that say that you're alone. And so we will use that to kind of differentiate ourselves, you know, from others because we were Jehovah's Witnesses. So a lot of times, well, of course, it's not just Jehovah's Witnesses. It's, it's other Christians that, you know, they, they believe that you have to use a, the divine name or the exact pronunciation of the divine name. But anyway, uh, now just to interrupt you for a second, Antoine, uh, why was that? Was it simply because you guys were known as the Jehovah's Witnesses? So why was it a, a sort of, um, you know, be all and end all that the people you met who were not of the organization, that was sort of the first thing you had to well, yeah, that, that, that kind of started, you know, back before, before my time. That, that was in the president of the society's uh, time, uh, Rutherford, J.L. Rutherford. You know, and, and I believe it was in 1931, if, they, if I'm not mistaken about that year, that's when the name Jehovah's Witnesses came up. Uh, and he wanted to use this name, this name to kind of differentiate, differentiate his organization from the rest of uh, Christendom. So he held to this name, uh, Jehovah. And uh, he, he built this organization, Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, then fast forward a few years, uh, around 1950, in that area, that's when um, 
the New World Translation, I think it started in the, in the Greek scriptures first. Uh, they had the New World Translation, and then finally it was, you know, the Hebrew and the Greek scriptures together, and they, the divine name Jehovah was put in there. But a lot of the, the doctrines and theology is built around that particular name. But what I found interesting, though, as I left, is what I wanted to get to. Once I left, I started to notice a couple of things because I started to see some of the things that they were teaching they were either unsure about or either it just, you know, it, it wasn't true, it didn't, it didn't hold up. Like for an example, like I just mentioned, you know, we, we use that particular name, Jehovah, higher than anything else. But yet at the same time, here's a quote that I found once I, I first left. It was in the uh, brochure. This was uh, published by the Watchtower, the, the divine name. Now, I, I don't believe this is in print anymore, but you, you can still find it somewhere. But the divine name, it was uh, published in 1984. But it says, how is God's name pronounced? Now, this is from the organization who, you know, elevates this name, that particular name and pronunciation above all else. But it says in their publication, how is God's name pronounced? It says the truth is nobody knows for sure how the name of God was originally pronounced. So when I first saw that, I'm like, wait a minute now. Okay, <laughs> what, what are we talking about? So if we don't know exactly how the name is pronounced, so why are we elevating this particular name above everything else. You know, some, something's kind of missing there. And so I had to take it a little step further. Um, uh, can you uh, ch just pause there? I want to show people what you're reading there is similar to something um, I became aware of today, actually, and I'll just show people the meme here. So this is a uh, Watchtower Magazine, December 1st, 1950. The bottom one, we don't say that Jehovah is the correct pronunciation of God's name. For that matter, neither is Jesus the correct pronunciation of Christ's name. So they lumped in the uh, Jesus name with the divine name there. But the point is that you're making it here is that the tower, the watchtower themselves at one time, I don't know if they still hold that position, concede that you don't even know the how to pronounce the divine name, right? Right. right. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it, it's other, it's it's tons of information about that. Um, mm -hmm. it, here's another one. Okay. I don't know if you have this one. But now this, this book is definitely out of print. But uh, it was the Aid to Bible Understanding. It was published by the Watchtower. Um, in the 70s 1971 but uh it was like a bible encyclopedia of all types of topics but i think that that was taken off of the press and replaced with the insight books later on but it says in part i can't read the whole thing but it says the pronunciations jehovah and yahweh by combining the vowel sound or vowel signs of adonai and elohim with the four consonants of the tetragrammaton the pronunciations Yahuwah and Yahuwai were formed. The first of these provided the basis for the Latinized form Jehovah. The first recorded use of the form dates from the 13th century CE. Raymundus Martini, a Spanish monk of the Dominican order, used it in his book. Uh, I can't pronounce this, so forgive me. I think it's Trugeo Fadai of the year 1270. So here we have a, a Spanish monk, and you, know, you can see the Tetragrammaton. Right, if I could just, just pause you there again. Uh, I did find this quote, this is, this was published, the top right, that's part of it, yep. So it's uh, 1980, it says that that monk, Raimundus Martini, a Spanish monk of the Dominican order, first rendered the divine name as Jehovah, with a right. This form appeared in his book, Pugel Fidei, published in 1270 CE, that's uh, Christ era, 
over 700 years ago. So that's a Watchtower magazine of 1980. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. That that same quote. That same quote that's there. That was in the aid. Okay. It's aid book, and they just reprinted it in the in the Watchtower. So, but I started to see how the name kind of developed. So if it was it was the tetragrammaton there, it didn't have any vowel points. How do we know how to pronounce it? So the, the fact of the matter is, let's say okay. So we we found the fragments of of some old uh, Septuag Septuagint manuscripts uh, for the Greek scriptures. Okay, so they're there. We still don't know how to pronounce it. Either way. In the Hebrew or the Greek, we wouldn't, we don't know exactly how to pronounce it. So some people say Jehovah, some people say Yahweh. The point is, we're fine, that's fine. But we're, we're missing the point. The point is, what did Jesus, the Son of God, what was his whole point of the matter when he prayed? for his apostles and all other believers in John 17. He said, I have manifested your name to them. The people of Israel already knew what God's name was. So that was not the point. The point was he wanted to manifest who he was, his character, his qualities, his ways, you know, his plan. He wanted to reveal all these things, all these things that the most high God was, he wanted to, to be able to manifest this intimate relationship with his father, with us. So if we were tied down to an exact pronunciation of it, we're, we're kind of missing the whole point of what we have to have with our father. You know, it's that close intimate relationship that, that the son of God opened up for us that we have now when i felt that you know that that strong relationship with my heavenly father that doesn't mean that i don't believe he has a name it just it just means that when i pray to him and talk to him i, I approach him just like my father that's it so the all the other you know uh bickering about okay well here's the, here's the name it, the name is important it is in greek that's besides the point well, that's fine if, if we found that but we, we need to get to the heart of the matter and recognize him as the creator of all things and the person who reconciled uh, us who was jesus christ but now here's a scripture i wanted to use it's, it's not really hard to you know to, to comprehend that for an example, uh, when we're talking about names, it, it goes beyond the mere pronunciation of it, too. When we speak of names in the Bible, the names meant something. Like, for an example, uh, Proverbs, um, I think it's 12, or let's, Proverbs 22. Yeah, sorry to the viewers for the echo every time I share the screen. I don't know why, but uh, Proverbs uh, 22. Right. Okay. 22.1. Okay. A good name is to be chosen rather than great wealth. Good favor more than silver or gold. Okay, so if we're, if we're to have a good name, are we, are we talking about how to pronounce our name? Or, or was this writer speaking of, of something else? Or was he talking about our character and who we really are as a person? Well, I would venture to say he's talking about who we are as a person, having a good name. You know, you know, I, I can, it, me, I don't have a, uh, you know, I have a, a name that a lot of people have my name. But at the same time, who, who am I? Who, who am I as a person? How can I make a good name for myself? That, that same thought is in Ecclesiastes uh, 7, 1. And the thing about it is, you know, if you go to any Jehovah's Witness funeral, this is a scripture that's 
always used. Is always used in their outline. Uh, sorry, Antoine, the echo again. Seven one. Yeah, that's it. A good, rep a good reputation is better than precious perfume. Likewise, the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. Okay. Now that's 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 a, I like that translation too. And the ESV it says a good name. Okay. Good name. Uh, good reputation. reputation. Yeah. Right at the bottom here. This is the net. Bible, by the way, folks, this is a, a free online thing and it's got good footnotes. So at the bottom there, you can see what Antoine is referring to. In the Hebrew, it's literally name. They paraphrase it as, as, as reputation, which is a, a good, it, which is the same point you're making right now, right? Right, right exactly. exactly. Okay. So if we, if we can make a good name, a good reputation for ourselves, right. now, you think about what the devil has tried to do with the Almighty God, you know, and, and the nation of Israel had a problem with, you know, connecting themselves with false gods during, you know, throughout the Old Testament. So now, here we go. We can make a good name for ourselves. Now, it, it's obvious that the Most High God should be able to make a good name or a good reputation from Himself to separate Himself from all other false gods. And this, this is what, what Jesus tried to teach too. He manifested his name. He showed who he really was. He showed who the, who the father was, his character and his love for people. This is the main gist we have to understand. We need to understand how much our heavenly father loves us and his reputation and his character above any and, and all other things. So, the exact pronunciation, we do not know it. Whether we have the fragments in Greek or we have it in, in Hebrew. Obviously, the tetragrammaton is there, but we shouldn't miss the point of, of what if we're talking about. A name is not just the mere name. We're talking about who he is. That's what, that's the, what we don't want to miss. So, right. So, so when Jesus, uh, uh, as you pointed to that John 17, when he says, I have given them your name, you know, right. this is not literally saying I wrote it on a papyri, papyrus or whatever they use. Also, right. as, as, as you're saying this, uh, I'm reminding, this goes back to the Davidic, uh, sorry, not the Davidic, but the covenant itself. If you check, uh, Genesis 12, and look at this in verse 2. Then I will make you, he's talking to Abram, then Abram, who becomes Abraham. I, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think God means uh, I will make it literally great, like I'm going to emblazon it, <laughs> you know, as big as, the USA, so you can see it from space. <laughs> I don't think that's what God meant. I think he simply means your name, who you are, your faith, the faith you have shown towards me, an unknown God. This was an unknown God to, to everyone, right? To, right? Including the pagan Ab Abram. Abram was a nomad. Uh, I'm assuming, uh, you know, he, he was not a... <laughs> A, a Jew, let alone a Christian. It's just someone got picked out. And then the verse goes on to say, said, so that you will exemplify divine blessing. So it's interesting how blessing and greatness are synonymous or are parallel to the name, isn't that's it? Right. That's, that's absolutely in line with with what we're talking about you can so have so when you find what when you found out through your research and you were an elder right in the organization you told me right right so you know you were teaching a lot of the organization's doctrines mm -hmm. but as you further delved into the the matter of the name and, and all this as you said earlier you saw that there was sort of an evolution and and the origin of it was Catholic, 
And, yes. he, and it's interesting. So what you're telling us, telling me, which I didn't know, is that basically the, the Jehovah's Witnesses is in a way a Catholic uh, creation because they carry a Catholic name. The <laughs> Jehovah name that a monk in the 13th century came up with. Is that what you're basically, is that right? That, that's what's written. That, wow. that's, that's exactly what's, what's written. Um, now, what's interesting for us, the, for us, all these quotes, it, it seems like the things, like the one that we showed in the uh, Watchtower about Ramundus Martini, if you were to go, if you were to go to the, the JW online library, now, I don't even think you can find that name. It's like they, they want to erase that quote from history. For whatever reason, I don't. I can I can speculate why they did that, but you know, but either either way, it, it's it's clear to see where that name was you know originated from, and it's clear to see why they were trying to use it to to elevate Rutherford, use it to elevate uh, and cr to create this organization. Uh, so instead of insisting on what we were talking about earlier, understanding who God really is, they, they had to have a creation of this name to put everything together. That, that, that seemed to be the hook in everything. So sometimes when you leave, that's embedded in your mind so much, it's kind of it's hard to, to shake free from using that name, Jehovah. And like I said, I, I wouldn't condemn a person from saying that name or saying Yahweh. Now, that's not the purpose of all of this. The purpose... Right, that's not the point. The point yeah. is that people shouldn't say it. People shouldn't... Right. The point is that the, the organization... Know what you're saying, though. Right. Know where it came from and to understand really what Jesus was trying to, to do. Right, how, how Jesus, or how, see, this is the way we put it, Antoine. I don't know if, if, if you would agree, but I think uh, when you talk about the name, mm -hmm. either, either the name of God or the name of his son, Jesus, I think people have been sort of fed that it's sort of an abracadabra deal. You know, right. it's, like, it's like in Philippians 2, right? Paul goes on this whole, what they call the tautology, this whole... Uh, a song, some, some think it, it was a, pr uh, a song to Christ, to the Messiah, and how, you know, uh, the name of Jesus, says Paul, has been made greater than any other name. Mm -hmm. right? And so, but again, people have been fed that it's, Paul is talking about a literal name of Jesus, and and there are other groups of Christians out there that that stress that then we should go to the original name of Jesus, which is the Hebrew Yeshua. And you need to say Yeshua because right. Paul here is talking about look the, the name that is above every name. Yeah, that, that's not exactly right, is it? <laughs> no, that's yeah, exactly that's the same same concept. You know, we're talking about the exalted Son of God and what that means. And him having the life within him, you know, us expressing that faith in him and having that authority in his name, you know, that's still, that's go, that goes far beyond the uh, pronunciation. So, yeah, I agree with that. So I wanted to add too, you know, it, especially for, for witnesses, it, it can be real difficult, you know, especially once you're leaving, you know, you, you have all these teachings in your mind, you kind of don't know where to look sometimes and then you have you start to read things and you're flooded with thoughts but uh you know I, I would encourage any any witness in particular that's just that's leaving just take your time and, and pray and just make sure you know uh you'll get pointed in the right direction and i, I wouldn't believe you know just because you know these quotes here we can see it do the research yourself and understand. Uh, under, we, can, we can clearly see, and what unlocked it, what I learned, 
is what unlocked it too when we're talking about the bible as a whole you know we have this one way of thinking things in our world but we have to understand the way these hebrews of old thought you know how did they think when they said things did it really mean <laughs> what they said you know what it sounds like to us if we can understand kind of unlocking our minds these people in the bible and their, their culture and what and what they thought that makes everything make sense <laughs> it makes better sense so if, when they talk about a name it's different from when we say okay what is your name mm. That's you know, it's, completely different it's interesting i i think uh, my wife uh I gave this example. There are sort of vestiges today. There are sort of remnants of that sort of ancient Near Eastern custom. Mm -hmm. For example, my wife, I think uh, she said, you know, it's like stopping the name of the law. I don't right. know if people have heard that saying. I mean, yeah. it's a bit of an antiquated, but I used to hear that in cop shows from the 70s or something. The 80s, you know, stop in the name of the law. Or there's the famous song, right? Right. The name of love. The name, <laughs> right? You too, and I think uh, is it Tina Turner or something? And uh, so there are sort of you know when 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 you're, for example, you're you're a politician or something, a person of status or honor. Even today, I can, as a representative of Antoine, president of X, whatever company, you know, I come in the name of Mr. Antoine, CEO of whatever, you know, it's sometimes it's still used nowadays, so we can sort of maybe help ourselves that way, right? Right, exactly, exactly. So I, I can't emphasize it enough. Yes, the divine name is in the Bible, in the tetragram, which and it's, nobody and it's can. important, and it's important. Yeah, and it is important. But we just want to go up a notch to understand what is meant behind the name and what it means the meaning right. to to sanctify or to manifest its names. It goes above an exact pronunciation. Right. We're talking about his character, and that's something that uh, Jesus displayed. And it's really no other way that that will cut out all the <laughs> other you know different confusions and misconceptions out there if we can just get to the, the simple root of it mm -hmm. it is it boggles my mind how we can you know complicate the simplest of subjects <laughs> and uh it just turns into some kind of whirlwind of uh you know debates or whatever but uh but, but that's it just like you know I, I think about it this way you know as a, as a child you know kids you know they beg for things they they ask for things you know you can tell how much they really want something you know when they approach their parents you know my, my son loves to beg for things he wants a toy all the time he can just get a toy but then the next day we go to the store he, he you know he wants another one he said dad please please dad can i get this toy can i i do anything for this toy you know i can tell his heart is in it you know but but, but because he really, he, he needs, he feels he needs or he wants something, he'll, and that's what he'll say, you know, and Jesus said, when we pray, you know, he, he gives the illustration in Luke about asking, you know, a good father and how much more so our father in heaven give us something, give Holy Spirit when we pray for him. So when we pray to our father, you know, we're approaching him just like a son something that we need or we desire you know you know and and our and our walk with christ we, we we pray we plead for it but i don't know that many children that will you know call their parents by their first name they'll call them who they are their their, their father their, their mother they would say dad or, you know that that's the intimate relationship that we have Actually, in, in many cultures, Anton, I don't know if it's the same in the English, but I'm, I'm from a Hispanic background, but uh, I'm sure it's the same that uh, we were brought up, I certainly was, that if I called my father by his name, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, Carlos, his name is Carlos too, it's yeah. respectful. 
Yeah, that's how I was brought up. You know, they, they say like, what am I, your brother? What, you know, am I your, <laughs> am I someone you don't know? Like, no, I'm your father, you know what I mean? Uh, so it, it's a bit of a, this. And the other thing as you're explaining this, that comes to mind is, imagine this folks, the people watching, imagine this, Jesus, through Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Through the son of God who was, who died sinless. Right? No one else can claim that. This man died without committing a sin. There was no sin found in him. Right? Yeah. That's incredible. That will never happen again, folks. Okay? Um, and because of that, he was raised. He's the firstborn of the resurrection, right? The first of many brothers and sisters to come. Because of that, God uh, brought him back to life. And not only that, says Paul in, in the famous Philippians to him, but he exalted him to the highest, right? So, so high that he's currently at the right hand of God Almighty. So that man, that man who died sinless, who has been raised to life, the only human being to ever have come back from death, by the way, through him, we can... Um, how can I put this? Call on the God and Father, the creator of all things. We can call to him in the same way he did, in the right. same intimate way he did, in the same unique way that he had access to. And I'm sin, I'm as sinful as anyone. You know what I mean? Yet through Jesus, through his sacrifice, through his blood, we are brought in that same intimate relationship mm -hmm. that they shared uniquely. Right. So why would you want to give that away? Exactly. Isn't that an incredible? That's, 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 that's the mystery. Paul says in, in Colossians 1, 26 and 27, the mystery of all the ages is Christ in us. What, what, what God is doing in us in, with his son is creating this new creation and and paul said also in galatians that he sent us the spirit of his son in us and uh, yeah galatians 4 6 and so just like you're saying you know because we're sons of god now just like christ because of him and what he did we have that same intimate bond and connection with with our father just like he had with his father you know, he had to get off to quiet times and quiet places to pray intimately all night sometimes. We have those same, you know, yearnings at times. And you know, we, we pray to him and approach him just like our father. And again, not saying we don't know his name, but it's that bond that, you know, it is, it is un, as a witness, I didn't understand this. Right, through Jesus, the relationship yeah. is, you know, radical. Another, 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 yeah, it's a, a level, level never before seen and never before shall be seen, and only in the faith of Jesus, and only if you have, if you believe Jesus, will you gain that access? Exactly. To the creator and God of all. Can you imagine that? So yeah. now, if you, if you want to get dogmatic and and say to people, no, but you have to really know His name, or we have to know how to pronounce His name, and so on. I think it. I think it loses a lot of what we're talking about here. It's, it, it seems that way. Sorry, you were going to say about as a JW? Yeah, as a, as a JW, you know, we're not, we're not taught that. You know, we pray, we pray to Jehovah and we're his friends. We were taught, you know, if, if we're not uh, part of the hundred, which is, this is a different subject. I'm not even going to go into that. But if, if we're not part of the 144,000, who were said to be the anointed Jehovah's Witnesses, we are of a different group, then we can be his friends and we pray to Jehovah and he can, he, you know, love us. But it, it didn't, it didn't feel, it didn't feel the same whatsoever. You know, looking back, you know, I've always had a love, you know, for God. But, you know, what Christ opened up was something is just, uh, the most unbelievable thing. So that 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 was hindered in the organization. You you couldn't have that special relationship, that father-like relationship. Also, 
And also, is it true that knowing now who Jesus is as well? I mean, this is tied to who Jesus is. And the Jacob, yeah. the organization, teaches that he was the Archangel Michael. Right. You also no longer believe that? Is that right? Oh, no. Not at so, all. So that has helped also? That, that has helped, too. That has helped, too. And, and, and it, uh, if you don't know truly who Christ is, then how, how can that open up, you know, because he says he's the way, the truth, and the life. Now, what, what, what path are we going to if, if we're saying that Jesus is Michael the archangel? And he preexisted himself as Michael, and now he's in the womb of Mary, and now he's exalted as Michael again. That that whole thing is lost. So now you, you basically are caught trying to, to measure up and you never feel worthy and you know, you just live in a constant fear. But now you have this, this exemplar here who was a human. A, born, a, total, born. a total human being. Yeah. It started and like we started in the womb. Exactly. He chose to do things the right way way the passionate way and he did all things for us and to be glorified now he opened up this door for us and hey we can do it too we can do it too you know because you know I, our, our brother has has done it Jesus right Christ has done it. just to go back to something you said about the uh website of the jw.org let, let me look for that name let's see the name was there it is, Raimundus Martini, right? Right. So let's see what happens. Nothing. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. So let's just search for Martini. Maybe the drink is here. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Yep. Same deal. So just that August 20, that has nothing to do with it. So it vanished. So, right. So it's interesting because they've been citing this character since the 30s is that right since the 1930s at least it goes back to at least i, I know for sure I, I saw a quote from 1980 and then 1971. right so we got this. i just picked out a few right also um while we're uh just to go back on the name issue uh i did a a, a little presentation and I found these examples of, uh, so you mentioned uh, Proverbs 22, Ecclesiastes 7, 1. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, I found this uh, in the name of. So let's see what the Bible means by name. So you have Genesis 48, 16. The angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the boys, and in them let my name, so that's the angel's name, by the way, the messenger, be carried on. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, or Isaac. Sorry, this is uh, this is uh, uh, not the angel speaking. This is someone else speaking. So the angel redeemed them, and in the name of the angel, they have authority as well. And then there's Deuteronomy 18 for the Lord. Yahweh, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, Jehovah, if you want. Your God chose the tribe of Levi out of all your tribes to minister in the name of God, of, of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So same deal. It's about authority. 18, a prophet speaks in the name of. So the context there being in the authority of God you speak. You speak for God. You're representing God. And guess what? You're also as God, right? Like Moses, Exodus uh, 7 1, Exodus 4 16. Also, I found that it has to do a lot with power, authority. Uh, you got Deuteronomy 25, the first son she bears shall carry on the name of the dead brother. That's interesting, isn't it? So you carry the name, which means maybe property. Maybe uh, slaves at that time they owned slaves, so maybe you inherit that through the name. Mm -hmm. Samuel, David said to the Philistine, I come against you in the name 
of the Lord Almighty or Yahweh Almighty, and and so on. And then you have uh, the one you mentioned before. So, and the Colossians one, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not that you're going to go around saying Jesus, you know, every time you brush your teeth in the name of Jesus, you know. <laughs> But, you know, let's be sane about this, biblical about this. And then you have calling on the name I found as well. So people called on the name of other people. Look at this one, Isaiah 44, call on the name of Jacob. And, and they named him, uh, himself by the name of Israel. Uh, why? Because they represented God. Uh, First Peter, call on the name of the Father and so on. So call on the name of our Lord Jesus once again there. So calling on the name is also a prayer language, right? Exactly. And uh, yeah, so th those are just some examples to add to your excellent uh, scriptures there. Yeah, that was good. So yeah, folks, uh, uh, I think, uh, let's see, do we have any comments on Nope, I don't think we do so. Okay, so <laughs> I'll, I'll let you go here, Antoine. Th thanks a lot. And do, do you want to say anything else before we wrap up? No, I, I think that'll do it. I, I've, uh, I just wanted to get across like that last time that if there were any XJWs out there listening, you know, right. it, I know firsthand how difficult it is once you first start seeing all these things and you know, it's like your the, your world is crumbling because one you just thought this you, you have this safety of the organization that you thought was God's organization, and then when it you see clearly that they're not who they say they are, it can be difficult. But uh, you you'll be in in my prayers definitely those people those ex witnesses and anyone out there searching for truth because it it is there. It is there, so I would just uh, stay close to the scriptures and pray, and things will come together with time. Yeah, and, and also, like like you said earlier, don't believe us. You know, yeah. you, you had to do your own research. You didn't just hear someone and go, "Oh, I believe that." No, you gotta be a Berean, right? You gotta yeah. search these things out and see if they're true. Don't just let you know, people. Please don't believe us. Right. <laughs> whatever we have shown you, whatever you have heard, check it out for yourself. It's the best Berean way as, as we're talking next. So thanks a lot, Antoine. Oh, no uh, problem. Thank you. We'll wrap it up here. So remember, folks, uh, teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And hopefully the truth will set us free.